scattering flowers out there and you're like, that is so beautiful. And nobody's even attending to them, you know? Nobody's taking care of them, but they're just doing their thing. Welcome to Wild Development Studio. Join us as we venture into the breathtaking realm of wildlife arts and untamed adventures. With captivating stories from the field and ideas to dive into the visual arts, we'll ignite your passion for conservation. Get ready to develop something wild. Welcome to Wild Developments. I'm your guide, Lauren, and today we're talking to Betty Simon. She is first a daughter of God, a mother to eight-year-old twin boys, and a wife to a wonderful man God has picked for her called Shane Simon. She is originally from Uganda, but now she lives in the beautiful state of Oregon in the U.S. She loves sharing God's word, talking to people, hosting, and gardening. She is a speaker and upcoming author, and she is also starting a podcast called From Orphan to Inspiration. It's about sharing experiences to give hope to others. Betty will be sharing her own experiences and she'll host other people to share theirs. Her mission is to inspire, motivate, encourage, and bring hope to listeners. Betty says that if an orphan from a remote village in Uganda is in the U.S., married, has kids, is educated, and has a community, amazing things are possible for anyone. Betty, thank you so much for being with me today. Oh, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be here. And, you know, it's such a small world. We met on Mic Drop Workshop. And I met so many amazing women there like yourself. Are you going to move forward with your public speaking career? Yes, ma'am. And I'm so excited about it. I've always wanted to be a public speaker and I'm working on it. I'm taking classes. I've done some few speaking engagements, not paid, but those are good because they are going to push me to, to learn more. And when the time comes for being paid, I'll be good at it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All those little baby steps getting you where you need to be. What are you going to be speaking on? I'm going to, my message is about hope, is to bring hope to people because I was in a hopeless situation. My father died when I was eight and my mother died when I was nine and I was left pretty much without much care and I was helped by people who didn't even know me before who were not family members and so many things that I've gone through my life which seemed hopeless but then after some time, I gained hope and I came through them victorious. So I want to share that message to people who might be in the same situation or different situations, but they need hope. They need to know that there is light at the end of the tunnel. So that's my message. My message is about hope. That is a beautiful message. What are some things that have helped you stay hopeful? Uh, first, I'll, I'll say my God. Um, God has helped me in that area and then loving people. I'm surrounded with love from people, first from my husband, from the people who raised me, uh, from friends, uh, reading books, reading my Bible and just encouraging myself to, to be hopeful. And also sometimes from other people that I see who have overcome a lot, they, they help me to, to know that there is always hope no matter what the situation is. Do you have a favorite Bible verse that helps you to stay hopeful? Yes. My favorite verse is John 14, 1, when Jesus was telling his disciples that they should not be worried. They were really worried because he was about to go. He was about to leave. And he told them, do not be worried because I'm going to prepare a place and I'll come back and get you. So that is my favorite verse. It is a gospel, John 14, verse one, and you can read more, but that past verse, do not be worried. But to believe in him, to believe in the father, that's my best verse. <laughs> I love it. And I love that in the Bible, it says, uh, be not afraid 365 times. Oh, so that's one. one for each day of the year. Yes, that's <laughs> wonderful. Yeah. When you're working on your speech or thinking about what to say or trying to get close to God, do you do any of those things sitting or walking in nature? 
Oh, yes. I love to be in the garden. I have a garden here at our place. I'm surrounded with trees. Our backyard has quite a lot of trees. So I love to be out there. My best place is to be outside. I don't want to be inside. I was born in Uganda. So we are always out. We are always in nature. We are in the trees, in the forest, you know. We go through uh, uh, nature to go get water and all that. So I love being outside in nature. And sometimes when I'm out there, that's when I get clarity on stuff. That's when my thoughts become clear. That's when ideas come to me. Um, I just I just love to be in nature. <laughs> I do. I love it. Do you have a favorite memory from uh, growing up in Uganda? Oh, yeah. There's a lot of memories, but I would say one of them is during harvest time when we were harvesting corn and peanuts and sweet potatoes or anything but mostly the corn and peanuts i remember very well we would make a fire in the garden because we would pull out this corn um i don't know if you call them husks so whatever you call them yeah and then we would throw them on the fire we'll collect firewood and make the fire put grass on it and all that and then we'll get some corn and put it under that fire that is going or some cassava which is called yucca root here in america and then as we are working we are working it is cooking and it is roasting yeah roasting is the word and then we would sit around that fire and get the stuff out of the fire and start taking the husks of the corn uh and sharing and eating it uh that we've been eating also on the peanuts we are picking out <laughs> It was just a fun moment. It was, it, I still remember that to this day. Really, really great. I loved it. I loved to eat in the garden on the things which we are harvesting. Yep. Oh, it, there is just something about fire roasted corn. It is delicious. Yes, it is. <laughs> Did you ever have a moment where you had to overcome a challenge in nature and how did you navigate through it? Well, yes, um, there, there's quite a few, but I will uh, concentrate on one of them. One day I was told to go try to find firewood so we can cook, because that's how we cooked, with firewood. So I was out there in the trees. I remember it was the, a bunch of coffee plantation trees, and I was getting up on this plant this coffee tree to pick out some dry pieces of wood or branches, I would say, to, to put with what I was already having. And as I reached over, I saw this huge snake <gasps> looking at me, like ready to take me down. And I'm talking about snakes in Africa. Snakes <laughs> there, always snakes in Uganda, are not like snakes here in America. They are not pets. You're not gonna find it and all oh, bring it in your house. They are poisonous. They will kill you in a minute. You know, mm -hmm. if it will bite you, it will kill you. I don't think if it bit me, I would have made it home alive. I looked up there to get the, my fingers are up there. I'm still young. My fingers up to get this dry, branches and it is just looking at me like ready i threw everything i had i ran i was screaming i was scared i was in tears but i was grateful that i wasn't bitten by that snake i was really grateful i'm grateful too that's nightmare fuel betty <laughs> oh, yeah up to now i still kind of visualize that snake looking at me, you know? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. Yeah, do you have snakes now where you live? No, we don't. And that's one thing I told my husband. I said, please, wherever we are going to live, <laughs> I want to make sure there are no snakes. My husband always makes fun of me because he's, he's an American. They don't fear snakes, you know? Um, his parents have a huge property and they have those garden snakes there. And sometimes they 
ah, I, I've seen one day and I, I just take off. And they just laugh at me. They're like, it's not going to bite you. I'm like, I do not care. I don't care whether it's going to bite me or not, or a garden snake or not. A snake is a snake to me, and I'm off. So where we live, no, we don't have snakes. So thank God we don't. <laughs> what yeah. are some things that you like to do in nature where you're at now? Gardening, gardening out there. I do love it. And then out in the woods, we, we have a waterfall in an area. We live in, in Roseburg, but there is a neighbor neighboring area called Glide. There is a, a waterfall up in the in the forest. I th I will call it the forest in the woods. So we we usually go and walk up there as maybe like 30 minutes walk in the woods and we just stare at it and look at it. And I love to do that. I also love to go to the coast and just go through the grass when you're walking from like your your hotel down to the to the water. You go through this grass that is kind of um, waving around and touching your legs and all that. Uh, I also love to just, uh, my boys love to be outdoors. So we take them to zip lining. We've taken them a few times, like mostly when we are camping and all that. So we are out there in the, in the nature. They're zip lining away in the up and stuff that I, I, oh, I'm even scared. I mean, I love zip lining. It is terrifying. And I let my zip lining instructor know that the first time I went out. And yeah. as soon as they're like, all right, jump. And I, I jumped and he's like, I forgot to connect you. And I was like, oh, no. that's not funny. <laughs> oh no, I, I don't do it, but I watch my boys do it. And I'm praying down there where I am. I'm like, oh dear Lord, please bring them back. <laughs> it is scary because it... they're up there. And if they were to fall, there is nothing you can do about it, you know? Yeah, you have to put a lot of trust in the people that are hooking you up to those things and lots of trust in God. Yes, that's true. The, the most beautiful place I've gone zip lining is in St. Croix because you can see the ocean and all the mountains and all the green forests. And it was just, it was beautiful. Oh, that's nice. That's wonderful. Now, I have to tell you, I am really impressed that uh, you garden because I'm taking a community garden class and there is so much to gardening. And I tell everybody I have a wilted thumb. I don't have a green <laughs> thumb. <laughs> what, are, what are some of your favorite things to garden? Oh my goodness. We garden it all. And my husband too likes gardening and the boys love it too, but we do pretty much a lot of it. We do beans, we do corn, sweet potato, uh uh peas we we do the peas first so we can eat on them you know and we do uh squash we do pumpkins we have we don't have a really big garden but we 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 just grow it all in there we we grow so much garlic um uh sweet potatoes my sorry sorry potatoes normal potatoes my husband always makes fun of me he's like you plant so many potatoes yet the potatoes are so cheap in the store and i'm always telling him it's so fun to just open my back door and go in the garden and harvest the potatoes for dinner you know they still have the dirt on them and i wash them i love it we do a lot of uh, flowers also. We plant so much flowers. We love flowers. Our place is always colorful. We plant, um, what, 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 what am I forgetting? Sunflowers, those are also flowers. We do plant cabbage. We plant all sorts of vegetables. We just pretty much plant everything, you know? Right. That's pretty, yeah, we do a lot of planting. <laughs> you know, do you find that the fruits and the, or the vegetables just taste better out of your garden than they do from the store? I think they do. You know, they do. They don't have a lot of pesticide on them. We don't, we don't even spray them, but once in a while they get little like caterpillars on them, 
So we have to kill those. So that is pretty much what they do. But we don't spray for them to grow big or anything. I think they do test, and the potatoes for sure, I'll tell you, the potatoes for sure, they test really good mm. from the garden. Yeah. I'm going to have to try and, and plant some potatoes. <laughs> yeah, I, you can. <laughs> I'm just so horrible at gardening. Do you have any tips for me? Yes. The tips is love. Love it. You know, when you're loving what you do, it's going to turn out good. You love your garden, love what you're going to do. That is good. And also get some good soil that will be helpful. Uh, water them according to the instructions. Don't let them too be too wa watered or be too dry. Just um, follow the instructions on, on the type of whatever you're planting. And just let nature uh, help grow them, you know, just let them grow. That's good what? advice. Yeah. I yes. There was a woman last night and she was, we were planting the seeds and she was talking to them. And she's like, here you go, little <laughs> baby. And I, do you talk to your seeds and your plants? No, I don't. But one time I was planting stuff and the little girl from the neighborhood came over. Kids come to my house so much. It's like, my boys just attract these kids in the neighborhood. So they come here a lot. And one of the girl was like, oh, can I help you? I'm like, sure, you can. So I showed her what to do. And then I had her whispering stuff. I'm like, what is she saying? So I was <laughs> interested in knowing. So I said, so-and-so, what are you talking about? She said, like, oh, I was talking to the seeds because if you talk to them, they grow better. I'm like, really? She said, like, yes, yeah, they do. So I, I've, I've seen somebody do it. I've, I have not, but I'm yet maybe to try it. Maybe this, this time I will talk to my seeds and tell them to grow big, you know, grow good. <laughs> there you go. And oh, it's almost March. I know the episode's going to come out in June. Have you started um, doing anything inside with your seeds or do you wait until like mother's day to start planting? Uh, we, we would have started already, but we've been remodeling our house. So we are kind of focusing on the house at the moment, but we are going to, I think I'm thinking next week we'll start getting the, the seeds going because we have a, a greenhouse. So we'll, okay. we, we know that the seeds in the greenhouse and let them be in there for a while before we bring them out when the, the weather is good. So I think next week we will, which will be the beginning of March. We'll do that. Very nice. I bet you guys have a lot of bees and butterflies in your flower garden, huh? Yeah. Oh, yes, we do. We do have a lot of bees because we have sunflowers. We have a pool, so we plant sunflowers around the pool the all the around the pool area and so the bees are there a lot <laughs> we have so many of them that sometimes i'm scared they're gonna bite somebody but they don't they're doing okay yeah they're busy pollinating you're doing an important job yeah that's what my husband says yeah he's like we need them because they're gonna pollinate and then we they do that also on the corn we see them on the corn a lot Mm -hmm. yeah and also the flowers some other the flowers they the bees are on them quite a bit i'm grateful to to be on this podcast this this is first of all my first podcast <laughs> i've never been on one so i'm so grateful to you for giving me this opportunity thank you so much and i'm i'm sure it is going to open doors that i'll be on others um um an African who lives here in the U.S. and I love both ends. I love the nature there. I love the nature here. I love the people, and I'm just grateful. You know, I'm grateful for everything, for everything. Oh, it's, it, yeah, I'm glad you uh, decided to come on the show because it was a very interesting. I loved hearing your experiences from Africa and all about your gardening. Um, and I will say having run a podcast and being on other people's podcasts, it's a lot harder in your seat than it is in my seat. <laughs> so you did a great job. Thank you so much. Oh, and that was one thing I'll, I'll tell you about nature. When I was growing up, we would get sick 
not a whole lot, but when we would get sick, we would get medicine from nature. There will be this type of uh, herbs that they will get and mix them with water, give us to drink. You have a fever, you drink it. You have a stomachache, you drink this one. You have a headache, you do this. And those things worked, you know? That was all nature. So sometimes when I'm giving my boys medicine, like um, ibuprofen or Tylenol, I'm like, I wish I had that stuff that I had when I was young to give him because now I can't just go in the garden and pick him and give him but I remember those days that they worked <laughs> we didn't have the money to go buy the medicine so we just used what we had the aloe vera and other types of herbs so I that that to me is still mind-blowing that a leaf or a herb can you or something, you know? So anyway, I don't know. <laughs> I agree. I think that we rely too much on chemicals and not enough. I, I, I think God gave us everything we need on this beautiful earth. And I think that's beautiful that you guys were able to just pick something and cure a headache or a stomach ache. And mm -hmm. I, I think that, uh, well, I wish that we could go back to, to using more herbs and getting in contact with nature like that um, again, maybe someday. Yeah, maybe someday. I was going to say that it is starting to come back because I see a lot of uh, people who are going like plant-based or natural path or this and that. I follow a, a, a guy on YouTube called, uh, his name is Bobby Price, Dr. Bobby Price. He talks about all these natural things that we can still do and get relief if we're having some issues going on. So I think it's coming back. Hopefully it will. Hopefully. Yeah. You know, you brought up YouTube. You're on YouTube too, aren't you? Yes, I have a YouTube channel. It's called God's Word for Us. So I just make short videos um, and post them on there. Yes, I am. And you said God's word for us, right? God's for us. God, God's word for us. Yes, ma'am. All right. I will be sure to tag that in the show notes. And then if somebody wanted to get in contact with you and hire you as a speaker, how can they get a hold of you? I will give them my phone number, which should I give it to you now or send it to you? Um, yeah, you can give it now. Okay. So it is 541-220 nine three one eight and i have an email address which is my name betty simon but instead of a y it will be i e so it will be b e t t i e simon zero two one four at gmail.com very good and i will be sure to link those in the show notes as well and before we go what is one tip that you have for someone that would like to connect with nature Oh, it is wonderful. It's it's life out there. It's life. I I don't want to be inside. I want to be out there. I want to be breathing the fresh air. I want to be seeing the birds flying all over the place, the insects, the looking at the water. Uh, it is soothing, you know. It's like you forget all the noise from the city, the cars passing by and pollution and all that, and you're out there just taking it all in admiring God's nature, admiring how things were created. Sometimes when I'm like in the trees, I look at a certain tree and I'm like, how did that even become that tall? And it is not falling down. You know, you would think it's going to break and fall because it's so tall, but no, it's up there. It's, it's still firm. <laughs> and then you have certain flowers out there and you're like, that is so beautiful. And nobody's even attending to them, you know? Nobody's taking care of them, but they are just doing their thing. I yeah. Get out there in the in nature. It is so beautiful. It's 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 lovely, you know. I I just love it to to be out there. And when I was young growing up, we used to go collect firewood in the forest and it would be out there. And you just love it. Just enjoy it. It's good. It is great advice. Thank you so much, Betty, for being on the show. 
Thank you so, so much for having me. I'm so grateful to you for giving me this first opportunity. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> I'm Thank so grateful. Thank you. And until next time, get outside and see what develops. Thanks for joining Wild Development Studio. We hope this exploration into the world of wildlife arts and adventure has sparked a desire to get outside and connect with something wild. If you have an adventure that's awe-inspiring, don't hesitate to share. Click the link in the description to submit your story to have it featured on our show or be a guest. Until next time, keep connecting to the wild and see what develops. The views, opinions, and statements expressed by individuals during Wild Development Studio productions do not necessarily reflect the views or opinions of Wild Development Studio or its affiliates. Participation in any activities, expeditions, or adventures discussed or promoted during our content may involve inherent risks. It is strongly advised that individuals conduct thorough research, seek professional guidance, and take all necessary precautions before engaging in any such activities. Wild Development Studio, its representatives, or employees shall not be held responsible for any injury, loss, damage, accident, or unforeseen incident that may occur as a result of participating in activities inspired by or discussed in our content. By choosing to engage with our content or act upon any information provided, individuals do so at their own risk and discretion.